Hello, we're back for the last lesson of the day, social coding. So yes, the links are down below in HackMD. And this is a lesson where you can more sit back, relax, listen, and comment. So we have some different exercises, but they're more like discussions in HackMD. So if you would like to relax, basically you can. And exercise leaders, you can also sit back and relax. There's no stress in this one. So with that being said, uh, Sabre here has the, um, the lesson opened up. And there's three sections here. One is about uh, sort of the big idea of social coding. So the sharing, the why and the how, the risks, the benefits, and so on. Then we have a short section on licensing which is about how we can express this sharing in practice. Then there's software citation. And unlike what the times here say, the first one will take most of the time. Licensing will be a lot shorter. And then software citation, we might just leave as homework or something you can read about later. Okay, so with that, let's begin. So, Sabre, what can you tell us about social coding? Hi, Richard. Um, so, thank you for the introduction. Um, so, we learned a lot of techniques uh, during this workshop. Can you uh, zoom how in? to do it? Um, zoom yes. in the screen too. Screen? Yeah. Better? Oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we learned a lot of techniques uh, we can use uh, to be social coders already. So we are going to um, sort of summarize uh, certain aspects and uh, focus on um, certain things you might overlook um, when you do uh, when you don't think of our projects as full-fledged software projects. Like um, we, we are, our our research projects are more or less prototypes research publications and that sort of things. And we write small code, small piece of software, which, which are not um, supposed to be sold as big software systems. We don't plan in such a way. So we, so we learn, learn certain things, very small things, very small steps that we could take um, to make it more uh, a social way of doing these things. Uh, so Richard, you see this um, diagram here where publications yep. are made. Um, so I could assure you that none of the publications contains, uh, I could actually like in, in a sense, if you think all publications, they contain information somebody else has already done already, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it collects. Um, um, so if you take one puppy, it might have um, content from many different publications. Mm -hmm. And, and on, the, on the other way around, when you publish something, software or uh, scientific papers, uh, people will use that for their work. So science is not made in one day, right? So people mm -hmm. as a society come together. Um, do, you, um, uh, do you have anything um, like specific that you want to mention about, let's say if, you, if somebody want to make, use your code, what, what are your expectations and uh, if you are using somebody else's code in your work, do you have any specific expectations yeah. of this uh, that you have? Yeah, well, I guess I'd say my expectation is that people do use it. So as a scientist, everyone says, okay, I want papers, I want citations. But in order to get that, people need to be able to, well, use your stuff so they can cite you. Like if you could, test against two different other methods and one had their code available and one didn't, people are going to use and cite the one that had something more available. Yes, uh, that is um, that is the good point, you know, the citability. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, uh, you might be able to achieve something you can't achieve as an individual, as a community. You know, the, the, the content that comes out of the several papers would be yeah much more than the parts mm, collected. So right, you, yeah. you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be part of something big. Like by being a whole community project or something where everyone's working together. Yes, 
yes. yes. Uh, so having in this uh, in this in this in our, in our minds, um, we, we are not going to go for um, like uh, individual rooms uh, or uh, go out of this. What we do is we'll open up the HackMD uh, and uh, our, our colleagues please open it up and then um, type in these two questions. Uh, did you ever share your code? Right. So if if you had share your code, what was the motivation? What was the reason reason behind that? So Richard and me, yeah. we were talking about some reasons like citations and being part of something big. And if you are not done that, or if you are considering not to do it, what is the reason not for not doing that? So these two things, I, I see that is perfectly set up on the HackMD. Yeah. Please type in because then we can sort of dynamically develop this part of the lesson. Um, so we have some points, Richard, below uh, from previous uh, workshops, for example. Yeah. But let's see what this audience uh, give us. Um, it takes some yeah. five minutes, think about it and type it in. Yeah. Let's see. Collaborative projects, getting independent credit for work done independently on my boss's opinion. Hmm. As a supplement, yeah. So this, um, when, you, when you think about this sharing or not sharing, which had, um, it, it's, it's sort of very, very important, right? To think um, your future self as a different person. You should, mm -hmm. you, should, um, you should imagine that situation as well. You moving yeah. on jobs. So it's, it's not only others that you're thinking about. It's also yeah. yourself in the future. <clears throat> Yeah, we just had a great Q&A session. Someone asked, okay, so what happens when I leave my university? Can I keep using my work? And the default answer is no. So once you've left, all your work belongs to your previous employer and you can't use it. So by sharing it and making it open, you're basically assuring that you still have access to it in the future once you leave. Yes. So as uh, people are still typing in, we can save some time later on uh, by sort of emphasizing what you said. Yeah. Uh, in Nordic countries, and uh, I'm not sure about all the all the countries uh, in Europe, but people could actually mention this in the HackMD later on, that if you work for a university, the work you do, it belongs to the university. So then um, you, could, you could actually collaborate with, within your uh, projects, but uh, Let's say if you want to, uh, if you don't license, license it, uh, when you start working on it, uh, that we will talk about uh, more about later license. And if you leave the university, you might not be able to use it for your postdoc work. Like if, you're, if you've done a PhD, you develop something in the university, you don't license it, and you go for a postdoc for someone, somewhere else, you might have a problem there. Yeah. I'm sure people have faced this uh, somewhere. Yeah. Um, what about the thoughts of the code being too bad to share? Um, so that is a that is a very um, a good uh, point there, actually. So this um, this sharing is uh, we, we, we have this uh, part in the in our tutorial. We say sharing sharing is scary. You mm -hmm. don't want to expose something that you feel it's ugly um, <clears throat> or like with bugs. Um, so if you, if you think of this in in, in this way, like if there are some mistakes. Don't you want somebody? Don't you want to fix it, or do you want to keep keep it unfixed but hidden? So, what is the yeah. the best way is to fix it, right? So, <laughs> if somebody would yeah. show you, then uh, uh, your product become a better product. Um, and yeah. in the code being ugly, um, so if, principle is it's okay to share anything. You know, you don't have to be like perfect to share it. Uh, but later on, we'll be looking at how you make um, people will come to contribute. Yeah. Like um, you can't just, um, um, even for yourself, it's better to make it little organized from the beginning. Like we'll be learning maybe uh, tomorrow um, mm -hmm. about test uh, suits, like, and also um, uh, functions that are sort of can be tested uh, independently. So th these things, uh, if, you, if you make uh, your code, you know, less uglier, to start with, that is, that is a good social yeah. practice. Yeah. 
but you don't you should wait for it to be perfect to be shared yeah which, which would never happen of course yeah and i mean i guess the worst code the most ugly code is one you can't see because you can't use it at all mm -hmm. um if someone needs it and it's not there that's the way at least how do you how do i say this nicely that's the thing that makes me think least about a code. Mm. Yes. If it's there, like I like I think most people who've done this long enough don't expect every code to be great. You know, mm -hmm. especially if it's yes. written for just one purpose. But as long as it's available, it can be continually improved by someone else if they need to. Mm. Um, okay, um, uh, Richard. So I, I see we... that. We have, yeah, we could move to uh, the teaching material now. I see very yeah. good points. We'll, we'll uh, focus a little bit uh, about them here as well. So there was this yeah. nice understanding overall. If you if, if you if you go through this uh, HackMD, it says, you know, I want help a colleague. You know, I want to get help from colleague. I would like to uh, be part of something. That's that's sort of reflected in HackMD. That's sort of uh, halfway through our lesson. That's what we are going to sort of um, convey a message. And and uh, and the basic yeah. idea of how to do it, not rules. We are not going to teach rules in this uh, lesson. You know, you should do this. With, it is just uh, you. You should be naturally social coder. So that's that's expectation. Yeah. Um, then <clears throat> uh, there are um, journals that actually um, force you to share things. Uh, open source journals, for example, the Science Editor. Uh, editor's policy, the science the journal called Science, it says all computer code should be uh, used in modeling and data analysis that is not commercially available, be deposited in a public um, accessible repository. That Thur was mentioning yeah. in the beginning of fair data. You know, it should be findable, it should be accessible, it should be interoperable. Um, yeah. You know, it, it should be at your disposal when you need it. So, so that's they, they that's basically saying that ugly code is no excuse. So if you want your paper to be cited, you need mm -hmm. to make your code good enough to share somehow. That is correct. So in principle, try to make it less ugly. So if your code will be welcoming for others, but you shouldn't be uh, waiting for it to be uh, perfect. So even when there is uh, policies like this, uh, so there's this nice article that we'll be following. Um, we'll be reusing a lot about examples from this. Um, so it's not easy to get this out from um, people. Like when they publish it and when you ask for something, can you give me the code? They give you answers like when you approach a PI of for source code and raw data, you get to explain yourself uh, whom you work. You know, they ask more details. You know, it's, it's like... Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's not welcoming when you when you when you re no. reply that. So if you if you publish it something and if your data is public, it should be public. It's not like so it's that like, somebody need to explain why yeah. you need it. So it's like if the code if you have to ask for code, it's basically the same as not being available for all practical correct. purposes. Yes, correct. Uh, and if if somebody has to ask it and they say it's not. Um, uh, uh, it's not deposited in a private repository, for example. And if they send it, even if they send it via an email, uh, Richard, I, 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 um, I, I was, I was looking at your the interview with that uh, Alto University lawyer. Mm -hmm. So she, she was saying yeah. that um, we could paste a link uh, to that in the HackMD if colleagues oh. if they have it. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, she was saying that if somebody just email you, maybe you can't just use it because it's, it's not the proper way to distribute things. Emailing archive is not a. They just it might not be clear what the license is. Yeah. Um, yes. <clears throat> There's a really great um, HackMD question. Do you think modern journals need editorial boards for shared codes also? Which I guess means someone that's reviewing the code for correctness and quality before you publish your article. Very very good point actually. Um, we should. Um, we should uh, make journals do that. Yeah. Um, the other, the, the motivations and the uh, the code re reusability, the motivation part, Richard, um, uh, because slightly we are behind. What we're going to do is we'll do it with the license, yeah. uh, because it's you need a 
more understanding of license. Um, yeah. If I forget to mention things about uh, do not lock yourself out of your code, things like that, mm -hmm. um, give me a, a reminder. Yeah. Uh, and what you could reuse. This also we could discuss later, you know, whether you could reuse libraries like NumPy or SolveFi or other li uh, scientific libraries. Is it allowed to copy random code? We'll come back to that as well. Yeah. Um, uh, this contribute, con contributes to reusability, like uh, that welcoming part I told in the beginning. So Richard, I, I thought maybe I could just show a repository uh, explaining that this concept. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is the NumPy. Hmm. You can know you, about this, right? Yeah, can you zoom in a little bit? Yes. So NumPy is basically the standard Python package for arrays. Yes. And it's a very um, large project, so has, what, hundreds or thousands of contributors. So how does it make it reusable? Um, you see this um, column here uh, where my mouse is, the readme, the license, code of conduct, citations, mm. these things. Oh. These are very, very um, good practices, Richard. So they have a license that we'll mm. talk about very soon. Yeah. License is permission. The opposite is um, uh, not to use it. Like it's not like people feel like license means like you know they are giving rules. You know they are imposing rules of license. They, they, that's true, but not having a license means we can't use it at all. So they are giving a clear license. This is under BST three license, mm -hmm. and then have a code of conduct in this project. If you want to contribute, how you do it. You know how you how you behave yourself a little bit, so they have they have that, and how to cite this you know clearly that yeah. the last part of the lesson we might not be able to go deep into it. It's it's very important that you mentioned very clearly how to cite it, so it, yeah. you could people are encouraged to cite it, and in in their like citation software for example, it's easy to copy paste things for example, like it, it should be make it easier. What happens? Um, when you click how to cite this repository, what does it even show? Um, Do you citation file? So it has this standard uh, citation it's file. It's a BibTeX file, okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Nice. Then um, Richard, then they have examples. For example, if uh, for the NumPy, they have this very good test. You know, when, when you learn about the writing tests, you should uh, focus very much uh, about this. So this gives a overall test of the whole suit. Should um, and then um, and then you have you know issue trackers. You know they are regularly answered. They are followed up. People ask questions. If they get uh, if they are, if you have issues, they um, talk about it. And if they want improvement, they mention it here that you know can I improve it for you? And then people uh, suggest things. And then pull request. There are there are the changes that are submitted go through reviews, mm -hmm. so there are no old, stale, uh, pull requests. So it's active project. So I, I don't think uh, Richard had, from the first day one we can we can achieve all these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like but we should we should, yeah we should try to do our best uh, in order to sort of get a feel of what we can do today. Like today itself. We have this example repository, the recipe repository that we yeah. use for the Git uh, intro. Shall we ask our audience uh, to visit that repository again uh, in this meeting itself, not, uh, not go for teams, uh, and mention in the HackMD the things they could use to improve that repository um, when you, when, uh, while uh, having this knowledge about how NumPy looked. You know, we don't want to go all the way. But open a HackMD and mention things you could include in the recipe um, GitLab, GitHub repository to make okay. it more socially welcoming. Yeah. So there's a really interesting question from HackMD I'd like to break up. When should I cite NumPy? If I use it in a software that I develop and publish a paper from the results, should I cite NumPy? Isn't that a fascinating question? I mean, uh, really? Yeah, yes, uh, it, yes, Richard. Um, you, you could actually focus the HackMD now. Okay, yes. You may, yeah. Here we go. Um, so if you, if you use NumPy in your project, 
you should uh, cite it definitely. So um, that's that's no argument in that. But let's say if you have a package that uses NumPy, but you don't use NumPy directly, then it becomes trickier. So you should try try to cite the package, and the package would cite NumPy. Hmm. I mean, I think I probably have hardly ever seen a paper that would cite NumPy, even though probably almost every single piece of work I've seen uses it somehow. But I mean, I guess if you go back to scientific ideas, what well, there's some fundamental ideas like the laws of physics, which are used by almost everything, but not cited because it's sort of so standard, it's beyond citation. I mean, yeah, what's the threshold here? Yeah, um, I don't think we can go very deep into those things uh, because we might uh, say something yeah. uh, precisely wrong. So, yeah. we, the, yeah. so what but. we're trying to give you is a general idea of um, how to find these things more. Mm -hmm. uh, and to and to and to open up the discussion and to and to uh, inform our uh, colleagues that even if you are writing a very small piece of software as a prototype, you should think of these things. Yeah. Uh, anything anything very interesting uh, in the Hackenby oh. that says um, so? Do we have to cite packet yeah. that contains stuff? Yeah. There's all kinds of interesting things here, hmm. like by having the requirements file, is that not a um, citation or somehow? I mean, yeah, I mean, it does show where it comes from. I mean, I guess you, um, when you get down to things, citations are this constructed thing in science, which is somehow used as our, like, our measure of credit, when in reality, there's far more different kinds of measures of credit and advancement in science, which need to be considered and trying to make everything a citation. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I, Richard, I see that um, like very specific questions about NumPy uh, coming yeah. up, which is a good thing. That means the discussions are, have started, that people start mm -hmm. thinking on it. Uh, let's focus those questions when you discuss the license. Okay, yeah, so okay, okay. we'll come back yeah. to NumPy in a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but now we have this exercise here, right? So we're looking at the recipe repository, which if you need a link to one, it's here. So people could be opening this and given everything we've been discussing now, we're answering what else would we add to that repository to make it reusable? Is that correct? Yes, Okay. correct. So I see that uh, more information, text, uh, readme file about it, uh, and a requirement text uh, mm -hmm. is needed. Uh, so that was a Gokumali uh, recipe, right? So it will be interesting to see uh, what requirement file that person would include. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah yeah just just imagine it as a, yeah you know it's it's i think it's 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 good the way people are writing they, they are imagining it as a software project itself mm -hmm. so i think it's a better way to look at yes do you do you have some threshold for how large a project should get before it gets some of these things like i mean does our recipe need to be as well developed as numpy like, okay, uh, maybe that's the too obvious question. Of course, the answer is no, but for a typical project you do, what's the right threshold of things? The, the, the right threshold of doing things correct is from the beginning. Let's say if you write a function, that should be a test you know, in, in that way. When you, when you initialize your project, initialize it with the readme, git ignore, and license, mm -hmm. even before any code is written. I think that's a that's a fair enough uh, yeah. request. I usually say the same, like at least have the license in there because that means if it's useful to someone else, then they can keep improving it for you. And then Correct. everything after that, well, 
it depends. Like if it's just for me, I might have a simple readme that says, this is my personal project. I don't expect it to be useful to anyone else, but it's here just in case. And then but usually I... the readme would get a little bit longer as it goes on. And I might say, okay, this might be reusable, but not too much. And then as time goes on even more, it gets to a like a better documentation site, tests, a lot of the other things we'll be seeing later on. Yes, yes, Richard. So we can move to the, the, the teaching material now because I see people got an understanding of yeah. what we are trying to expect to, what, what we are trying to communicate. Um, so next, uh, when we go to the next section, okay, let's look at the solutions a little bit, little license files, code of conduct. Mm -hmm. um, add installation instructions. Uh, yeah, basically what we are um, talking here. Um, in, um, in addition to this, um, um, you think, uh, we don't have time to go um, into these things much, uh, but have you seen, uh, Richard, that people, when you have, when, when they open some repository and then they publish it, they, they sort of um, uh, backtrack uh, thinking that people ask to uh, will ask too many questions, mm. you know, they will ask too much support that we don't have any time for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that also could be solved in a com community wise way. Like if you get more people yeah. involved in it, there'll be more people answering. But uh, that is a concern actually. Though if you if you go public, people will expect more things from you. Uh, yeah. I mean, maintenance yeah, that, is really the real cost of software. Mm. Like. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, license. Uh, does license care you, Richard? Or how do you feel about license? I mean, did you ask, does it scare me? So I would say, yes. No, not really. So, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. the me thing is, yeah, it's, um, you know, if you, the, the main, main idea that we are going to give in this lesson is to select a generic license. So you don't have to uh, worry about all this extreme low terminology, for example. Mm -hmm. If you know what you want out of your code, you could have a generic license. So that's mm -hmm. what you should focus on this rather than individual um, sort of terms. Yeah. Um, for that, we have this um, intellectual property. So in the European law, European, Union and extended uh, economic extended economic extended economic um, European area, as you know the the countries around. Mm -hmm. If you if you write something, if you publish some creative work, it's automatically licensed. Mm -hmm. It is you, you get the like um, copyright. Yeah. Uh, not the license. I guess the uh, wrong word there. Copyright is the correct word. That means if you make something you own it so people just can't take it away so that's by default so you don't have to do anything uh, to get that um, happening uh, and um, then you have the patents that for like no more non-obvious some some novel uh, innovations that you get the patents um, and then the trademark is sort of a business thing you get a business so people not like imitate you When it comes to uh, copyright, Richard, um, as I said, it's uh, uh, automatically protected. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's sort of, um, um, uh, the owner has the copyright even after the death. So I, I read uh, something, uh, maybe I told you yesterday about this. Uh, Michael Jackson is one of the richest dead people who earn earn a lot of money. So even, even after death, the copyright doesn't leave. So if you want to use something um, that's created by others, you have to think cautiously and proactively about this copyright. You can't just uh, take it just because it's there. Okay. Um, and derivative works, work we will um, uh, have a look uh, below. So this picture, um, the here, Richard. Does it yeah. remind you of any 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 popular artwork? Does it remind you of anything? I mean, it looks like the Mona Lisa, doesn't it? I guess that's what it's yeah. supposed to be. Yes. 
so that's a derivative work. That means you know they have used Mona Lisa to construct something else, but the mm -hmm. original concept is there. So we, we call it derivative so, work. Okay. Um, and and then have you watched any movies lately which are based on books? Hmm. I haven't much watched many movies at all lately, but probably <laughs> yeah. I mean, many movies are based on books, so. Yes. Uh, so Richard uh, is too busy with uh, code refinery, no time to watch <laughs> movies, unfortunately. But after this workshop, you should watch something to relax. So when a movie is based on a book, the movie is derivative work of the book. So in that sense. Um, and also we could um, find a lot of examples mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. And before we go deep into details, shall we try to get a understanding of currently what people think. So we could sort of build on it. Uh, for that, we go back to the hack and okay. And what we'll do is, yeah. mm. we have nine examples. And out of these nine, you have to find out which, uh, which one of these are deriv derivative work. And people could mention the number. And if another person agrees on it, they could do, uh, use a plus sign, for example. Okay, I'm getting it set up here. Uh... Oops. Okay, so I set this up as a poll, so you can add, yeah, okay. I guess we can use pluses like that. Yeah, let's... Um... Um... Maybe I'll copy them into here so we can see. I bet the numbers will not copy though. That looks pretty bad. Yeah. Mm. No, we don't need the text, I think. So number one is very clearly people say it's derivative work. Download some code from website and add on it. So it's building on something. Yes. Uh, download some code and use one of the functions in your code. Yeah, so you use that, you're calling that function. Um, that's derivative work. Yeah. Um, yeah, change some code. Yeah, it's more or less in the same line of uh, thinking. Extend, change. Uh, and this completely rewriting is a tricky one, Richard. What do you think? So I guess that gets to the point where if it mattered to anyone, some loggers would have a really, would get paid very well to debate this in court forever. Yes. Um, at least that's my, what I get from people. So I think like to, the biggest companies would consider looking at something like looking at the code itself and then rewriting it too close to being a derivative work, or at least mm. there's too much risk for it to be. Mm. For someone like us, maybe the risk is not so great, but well. Yes, yeah. so it's, it's, so it's, a, it's a case by case thing. So the rewrite, you, we can't, um, it, it's, we could, for the time being, we could consider it as derivative work in general sense. But as you said, case by case, it might be uh, different. But yeah. linking is okay. Like, uh, you know, static, if you know what, you know, when you compile code, you statically and dynamically linking, it doesn't become really uh, derivative uh, work. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you, if somebody explain you, you know, an algorithm and you write your code, that's not derivative work. So it's, it's, yeah. no, it's not similar to making a movie out of a book. It's, it's a different scenario. And read the paper and uh, write, write your um, code. That's also, it's, you're not bound by derivative law um, concept. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you have to, uh, the way th people um, um, the, like uh, uh, define these things mm -hmm. might be different in different scenarios. You, you, might, you might have to use this knowledge and the context of what's going on to understand, uh, to get the uh, proper picture. Um, and then uh, we can go back to the teaching material because I see that more or less uh, we have a common understanding of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, so when you, 
allowing you know, to work. That means uh, you, do, you do something and you are allowing, you're welcoming others. I would like to use this word welcoming, Richard, not just allowing or like uh, it's okay for others to mm -hmm. make changes. Mm -hmm. The welcoming is more, more or less what you want to sort of convey here. The, the quality control, uh, the, the, the quality of your product become higher because there are more eyes on it and people will uh, contribute and it's, it's become a better product and more applications. Um, and then you, people will cite you more. So scientifically, you, you become more significant in, in, in your domain and people will, uh, when people cite you. And uh, on the other hand, uh, Richard, although no, not focused here, what do you think that you give, um, you make a very good software, which is, um, which implements a great algorithm? Um, I don't know, I so identify certain something, but you don't give the code, but you talk about in, in conferences. Yeah. And so, people want it. Then they, they'll write their own copies. Then what, what do you think then will, uh, what yeah. will happen? So this is a good question. So in general, it's agreed that algorithms are not copyrighted. So an algorithm is basically math. So um, the mere algorithm cannot be subject to copyright. Patents is a different question. So I think in general, people, well, this is something that's debated a lot. Are software patents even, or are algorithm path patents even a good idea at all? And I think it depends on the country and also who wants to fight for something or the other. Like for example, at our university, the innovation services people say, okay, like if you just have the algorithm, it's not worth us to try to patent it. So instead try to use it for something and make it the implementation, the expression of the algorithm. And then you can try to commercialize that. Mm. True. Oh. Um, basically, if you, if you don't uh, share it, there might be low quality copies, for example, like if you don't properly sh share it. So your, your idea yeah. may, might get diluted in, in that sense, you know, software that doesn't, yeah meant to uh, implement that, but not doing a, a proper job. Mm -hmm. Now we, we come to this uh, software freedom, uh, Richard. So software freedom, um, um, shall, we, shall we sort of um, see it in a more, um, without going in depth, we'll, we'll have like a lighter look at it. Yeah. Uh, let's say Richard, I, I, I bake cookies mm -hmm. and I bake cookies and I give it free of charge. Mm -hmm. And if I give you a cookie, and if I call it a free cookie under open um, under free license, mm -hmm. can I can I ask you how you use it? You know, can I ask you like you should eat it today, or can I ask you you should not have chocolate on it, or mm -hmm. can I ask you can I you should not dip it in milk? Can I do certain things like that? Okay, so you give me the cookie. Can you? constrict how I can eat it or use it. Yes. Mm. Well, I guess you could if it's a, some separate agreement when you give it to me, but you probably shouldn't. I mean, then it's not really my cookie, is it? Um, not your cookie, but under, under software freedom, if I write a software and if I, if I say it's free, I can't constrain. People can use it whatever they want. And they could give it away uh, to anybody uh, as as they wish, but you know there are there are license restrictions apart from. But the, the concept of freedom means that there's freedom to do anything. And uh, for example, let's say if you do something bad with the cookie, uh, imagine a situation that you are in Oscar, uh, some award ceremony, and some comedian makes a bad joke about your partner, and you start throwing my cookies at that uh, comedian. You know, they, you know, I can't say don't do that. Uh, and um, and also that if you eat a cookie and if, if you become sick, then I'm not liable liable for that. So it's it's that's also part of it. So I'm not responsible for that part. Yeah. Um, so that sort of freedom. And also, um, do you think, uh, Richard, if I, I I bake free cookies and I leave them on a plate? Say that it's free. Take it free. Yeah. Then I, I stand uh, beside the uh, beside the cookies and I, I sell my recipe. 
Mm-hmm. No, I tell people, you know, I bake this cookie, eat it free. But if you want the recipe, you have to pay. Do you mm. think it's 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 allowed? I mean, I guess so. Mm-hmm. I guess you can sell the recipe. Can you co- stop someone from making extra copies? That's another question. Yes. But, now now you're going yeah. to very <laughs> very boundary level conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the concept is. Free software does not mean that you can't make money. You can make money other way. You can teach people to make, you can f- make the free cookie and give it free. Mm-hmm. And then you can teach people how to make the cookie and make money. So free does not mean that you have to do a charity work. So you could make money. Right, okay, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we, could, we could discuss this about uh, uh, very long. Um, now we have uh, this, um, license you come to this um, okay specific license some some text that you could include it's like this is the actual uh, choice that you would make when you're releasing something yes so mm-hmm. uh, above is a, is a sort of like a, a considerations that you make this is the technical implementation of the the product so mm-hmm. this is what you would actually select yeah uh, so when we make this uh, material region so i see that somebody has included this screenshot here um, yeah. Okay. So these are the you, main you, categories. Okay. These are the main categories. But do you think the screenshot from this uh, place uh, uh, is from another website? Do you think it's 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 okay according to the knowledge we have now? Hmm. Is it, should it is it okay to include this uh, image? That's a good question. What's the license of choosealicense.com? Yes. So I will, I will uh, encourage people to go have a look at it and um, send us feedback to Code Refinery asking uh, like uh, what they think about it, including this image, uh, image which, which, uh, which gives us two advantages. One is you will visit license, um, choose license.com and understand how they function. And the other thing is you will um, read a license of something that is not obvious. Yeah. And I um, see, yeah. Go ahead, Richard. I see the license of choosealicense.com at the bottom. It says the content of the site is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 unported license. So I mm-hmm. guess that means yes, we can include it if we give the citation, like we see there. Citation. So with the here we are given the attribution here. So that should be okay. Uh, but I'll give you a, two minutes. I'll give you another example of uh, some practically mm-hmm. something I faced. Uh, so I was um, uh, involved in this um, uh, people who work with uh, human rights and they have this web page. And on, on their on their web page, uh, they have this uh, RSS feed which takes uh, content from other websites and they show a small caption of it. Then people interested they could click and go to that uh, place. Uh, but as you know, working with these uh, human rights and that sort of things, um, some people are not happy with it. So they, they try to find faults. Uh, so there was an image appeared on one of the RSS feeds, mm-hmm. which the original site did not have the license to be redistributed. Mm-hmm. So then there was a lawsuit about it. So even if you um, go to see thumbnails, thumbnail images, but uh, if you know what, what they are, uh, when you're including them, you can't include them uh, just as you wish. You should l- read the license of the original site, how it says, mm-hmm. do, do they have the license to redistribute that image? Yeah. Otherwise, you might get into trouble. Uh, a very good license, if, you, if you're writing um, uh, research code, is MIT license. So mm-hmm. this is a very... Yeah. Um, um, flexible uh, way to start working on it. So even, even if you uh, have um, afterthoughts and you have to change certain things, it's easier to do with it. So if you read the permissions here, it's even allows commercial um, commercial use. Somebody, somebody can uh, make money of it. I know one of our code refinery colleagues mentioned some time back, I forgot the name, maybe from someone from Alto that they have written some code, but now a company want to commercialize it. Is it allowed? So if it is MIT license, it's it's allowed. Distribution, modification, and private use, 
it's allowed. Uh, and the conditions are very limited. It's just the license and the copyright notice that you should uh, mention. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you are not have any liability or warranty. As I said, you know, I make a cookie. If you get sick, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not liable for that. I'm not uh, giving any warranty okay. about that. I guess that's a really good point. So by having the license, you're disclaiming warranty, which is a really important point. Yes. And that also uh, came up in our FAQ. Someone asked, do I need to have, like, what if I release something without a license? And our lawyer pointed out, well, just keep in mind that the licenses have this warranty disclaimer, which is important. Correct. Uh, before going into the, the LGPL, shall we have a look at this strong copyleft uh, license? Yeah, that's um, mm. Yes, so this has, like, if you com compare these conditions, there are a lot more conditions here. So you have to disclose the source. Like, if you, if you use something uh, uh, from a GPL source, and if you modify it, you have to release everything in GPL. Um, do you know what, what a viral right license is, uh, Richard? Yeah, so viral license means <laughs> when you, okay, so anything that's connected to this in the future has to have the same license. Mm -hmm. So basically it like, mm -hmm. it's used to force people who are using your software to release their derivative works under the same license. Yes. Uh, so this virus term uh, or infectious term was, I think it was coined by not open source people, but people against open source. I think it was uh, mm. the company that I shouldn't mention uh, because for the recording purposes. Uh, <laughs> like if, if you use the GPL license, then everything else should become GPL sort of. Mm -hmm. And if you mix license, you should not try to not, never to mix things, but that's uh, complicated things. And if you have a GPL in it, so the Ultimately, you might have to uh, share a GPL. Yeah. Um, and uh, in our private modifications, the, the, the permissions are more or less same. And if you want something in between, you go for the lesser GPL, LGPL, or Mozilla uh, license. Um, the main idea is don't write your own, select one. Mm -hmm. um, if you try to write something, all by yourself. One thing is you might miss certain things because you don't know the entire ecosystem. All you are not fully thought through everything because like this license. And then if it, if, if it uh, becomes a lawyer's business, you will have a very hard time, even the lawyers understanding what you exactly uh, meant and what exactly you wrote. Um, select one of these as a starting point. Uh, code refinery uses MIT uh, license, I think, uh, still, yes. And if you don't know, uh, you know, no idea of uh, a license at all, maybe start with this mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, learn more. Um, so who can decide the license? It's the copyright holder, the person uh, owning it should decide it. Uh, the intellectual property or company or a, or a university, for example, if you work for that uh, project. Um, so I, I am going to again recommend that uh, recording that's already there in the HACMD. There they talk about um, that projects. Like, uh, there are individual work that uh, university researchers can do and claim their own work. But if they are part of a project that got funded, it's always become uh, the common product, co mm -hmm. common, uh, commonly owned by the university. Um, if you want a license, you can change it, um, but you can't change it at will because let's say if you accept, a, if you publish it in GitLab, for example, and uh, if, you, if you have a software, um, let's say the some script that you made to in video production for this course, for example, and if I send you a pull request and if you accept it, you are not the only owner. So you might have many owners. Mm -hmm. So you have to be think about that as well. Um, you can ask people to open it or you could request a license. Um, yes. Um, then uh, there are some practical recommendations uh, here. 
um, for, for this, I think uh, we have to stop in another five minutes. So this, please read the practical recommendations. Mm -hmm. And Richard, then what we'll do is we'll uh, end with an exercise like uh, on, 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 the, on the HackMD, like everybody contribute with the, with the existing knowledge, trying to answer these questions. Consider some of the common license situations. Number one, you say yes or no. What, what is the stack license code? Can you copy paste? Think yeah. about it. We, uh, you might not be able to finish everything by the end of the course, but we go to the HackMD so we can just talk through and continue our discussion until yeah. then. <clears throat> okay, I'm switching to HackMD. Can someone else add this to HackMD because my hands are a little bit cold. Also, we've already added the feedback section for the day, mm -hmm. but we can review that later. So for now is exercise. Um, anything else that I missed about um, licensing copyrights that you want to uh, talk about, or you see anything interesting that we should take up in the HackMD? Let's see. Let's go mm -hmm. scroll around. There's so many good questions in here. I mean, it's like we can't even um, begin to approach all these different kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. I'd say for many of them, this video that was posted up above at the q and I did with an Alto lawyer will give a lot of insight to many of them, or at least introduce you to how to think about the questions. Um, yeah, let's see. There's several different questions about like how much is copyrighted. So is the, um, like for clean room design or, okay, there's a question. So when we do this clean room design thing, is that like someone watching a movie and then telling you what was in the movie and then you making another similar movie. So I think that the gets to that what's creative expression or not. So algorithms, the base algorithm is not the creative expression. The creative expression is the code itself. So that's why clean room design works for software, but not for things like movies. Yes. Um, so, um, so there are a lot of things. If you um, if you think of certain con uh, concepts, it's, yeah. it's easier to sort of relate them to music or movies. Uh, at least for me to understand certain things. Um, mm -hmm. So, what is derivative work, and um, when when I could reuse it, um, that sort of uh, yeah. idea. But to get very specific details about software, you should actually look at this. Um, um, yeah. So uh, because now we are ending with the license, uh, Richard. Can, if you can, you give me a give me the screen back. I I, yes. I can show you something very small, uh, something obvious, but might not be um, uh, obvious for for everybody. So. In my recipe, um, the, the the test I did. Um, in this, when you uh, you can ask GitHub in, in addition to the license selection that linked earlier, we can also ask uh, GitHub for help when it comes to license. You could go for add create new file, and if you start typing in capitals, license. Mm -hmm. Some uh, some license are triggered here. Yeah. Then you can click on a choose a license templates, and okay. for example, then then you can read what MIT is and MIT is not. Okay. Because there's a lot of um, uh, GPL questions. I think most of them could be uh, explained in in the correct way that we are trying to sort of improvise. Uh, yeah. what GPL is, what are the differences between the versions. 
So only thing you have to do is you have to go and type the text as a new file license, and then it, uh, GitLab, uh, GitHub could uh, help you with this. Um, that's all, Richard, I want to mention. Yeah, okay. Um, Let's take a look at HackMD. Well, I guess our time's up. Um, 